Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ask Octopus, where we answer interesting questions we get from customers and the community. Uh, I'm Ryan Russo. Today with me, I have Bob, Sean, and James. Hey, Ryan. Hey, everyone. hey Ryan. How's it going? Doing it's great. Friday afternoon. Yeah. I was going to say, I did want to point out we are missing Derek because we started later than normal today, and he has already started his weekend so yeah i think he was he, he had to work on something else during our usual recording time so yeah, yeah our Actually, webinar that we have going next week turbocharging yep. octopus and azure devops I think so if you're watching this in the future that's going to be in the past it's going to be in the past <laughs> but there's, there's a recording somewhere around here yeah we have posted <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I've got a good question today. This is one of my favorite features of Octopus, and it's one of those things where there's a lot of different ways to do it. So the variation of the question is this. How can I automatically create releases when new packages are uploaded? Uh, what, what are ways that you've seen this solved before in the past? I've usually put it as part of the uh, build process itself using the create uh, release step for Azure DevOps. Yeah, I typically did that because we had like two or three packages that we were creating as part of my build process. Yeah, that's a pretty common way of doing it. Uh, and like I said, there's there's a few different ways to do it. There's not a right way or a wrong way. There's just a right way for your team or the your preferred way of doing it. Uh, I've kind of always used a different approach and for no other reason than I like to put most of my logic in Octopus. A lot of people like to put a more of the coordination logic in Team City or Azure DevOps, whatever build server they're using. It's just a matter of where you're comfortable with those steps and that information being. But the feature I'm talking about is actually called automatic, it's actually called automatic release creation. That's the name of the feature. Uh, and it's something you can set up if you're using the built-in repository. So if your packages are going to the built-in repository in Octopus, if you go underneath triggers, so where you set up your deployment target triggers and your schedule triggers, there's a little section over on the side here called automatic release creation. And you can click setup and you basically choose a step, like a step that has a package assigned to it. So really you can say, okay, whenever a new package is uploaded for this step, I want you to create a new release automatically for me. And you usually want this to be the, if you're uploading, like I've got four package steps in this case, uh, you'd want it to be, tied to the one you upload last. You wouldn't want it to tie it to like database if you upload your database package first and then it creates the release before your other three packages get uploaded. Would that work for reference packages as well? That is a good question. I don't have any reference packages in here. We can take a little side sidebar and let's just find out because I want to know the answer to that. What do you think? Let's, let's take some uh, guesses. I would think it would work because it feels like almost every place else we have that, but we're, we might have uh, spoken too soon, so we'll find out. I agree. I have a feeling it'll work too. I think it will as well. I just wasn't, I hadn't tried it this way yet, so I haven't I either. curious if you knew. No, I haven't tried it either. Let's set a package reference. Package ID, I'm just going to grab one of the ones I'm already using. I think all that's fine. Let's save that. Now let's go back to triggers and set up. It yep. does. All oh right. man, All that's right. nice. That's good. I mean, it makes, it makes sense. It, I mean, we already had to figure it out when you create the release. So it already went through all that logic already. I imagine it just, this is just a filtered view of that same thing. I do like that, that it actually shows you that it's a package reference. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, so the answer is yes, it does do that. Good question, John. I Fantastic. didn't I, not know that before now. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually gonna set this up to deploy main site because that's the, uh, the last step in the process. It's the one I would upload last. Let's save that. And you can see I've got one release that's been deployed very recently. Uh, well, somewhat recently. I guess our, my time stamp is off on this VM. Now, if I go to the library, I don't have any uh, any projects or any build servers hooked up to this. I've just manually uploaded some packages. So you can see that I've got version two uploaded for my three packages that aren't assigned to that uh, ARC trigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload the last package now. 
you want to click on the right spot on the file chooser and upload the package now. So behind the scenes, when I upload this, this will come in and create a new release automatically. So if we go in and look at this release, you'll see that it's got the packages assigned to it. So it's got the latest version for all of those chosen. And you can go ahead and deploy it to development or any other, uh, anything else you want to do with it. Use it in a deployment trigger or what have you. So how would I get it to deploy automatically? I'm glad you asked, Bob. Uh, that's <laughs> uh, what I was going to go into. So a lot of people, when they have this set up in their CI server, they have a few steps. So you have your build step, your package step, push the octopus, create a deploy and release it, or create a release and deploy it. And those are all steps within their, their build server. So we've already done part of that flow with ARC. We're going to create a new release when the package is uploaded to the built-in repo. If you go to your lifecycle, which I have modified from the default, you can set your first phase. Uh, I need to remove the environment and add it back at this point. You can say, I want my first phase to be the development environment. And you have this radio button here for deploy automatically to this environment as soon as the release enters this phase. And you could have that go all the way through where as soon as it's passed through development, it can deploy in the next phase if it's available. I want to stick with this one for now. You see, I got a nice little lightning bolt that's telling me that that is going to deploy to development automatically. So if I go and create a release manually right now, it will auto deploy to development. And we can show the whole picture. I'm just going to re-upload the same uh, package and just tell it to replace it. So a key thing to note, I did find this out um, today because I had to delete some releases to make sure that I that my demo didn't fail spectacularly. Uh, if you replace this version uh, when you upload the package, it will trigger ARC again and create a new hmm. release. Oh, okay. So I guess to, that makes sense. So if we go to the dashboard, I'm waiting for, well, it did it earlier. Mm, I wonder. I wonder if you have to delete the release and then re-upload the package. When, oh, because it's already got the release yeah. with the package. Mm. That would be the steps that I followed earlier. Let's go ahead and delete that. And yeah, so I guess if it's in a, if there isn't a release that contains that package, it would, it would recreate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That, makes, that, makes, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Hmm. So that's it. So now we haven't done this through our build server. Like I said, it's really up to you what your preference is, what your team wants to do, where you want to see this information. You can have your CI server coordinate the upload and the release creation and promotion. Uh, or you can also set that up through Octopus directly. Uh, like I said, this was kind of my preferred method of doing it just because I like to have as much stuff using the built in Octopus features as possible. So using the lifecycle with a uh, deploy immediately uh, flag on your phase, your environment in your phase, and ARC to trigger when a package is uploaded, you can automatically create a release and automatically deploy it when a new package is uploaded. That's super slick. Uh, one thing to keep in mind for this, uh, Ryan, I like to do it uh, the way you do too, kind of all through Octopus. Um, if you added a new uh, a new step to your project, you know, with a new service or, or something like that, and didn't update the trigger, um, you'd be getting the older packages um, in the release. If you didn't update the trigger to to build the release on the last package, I should right? Say. Yeah. So if you up, yeah, kind of going back to that, if you upload a package and it's not. If you upload the one that triggers the release creation, but the other ones haven't been uploaded yet, you're going to get older right. packages. Yeah, so right. that is one thing to be aware of when you're using this method is to make sure that you are triggering only on the last package uploaded. Exactly. And this is kind of a nice way that if you ever get into true CI CD Nirvana, where as soon as you check in something to master, it automatically goes through all your environments and in a, re in a really nice way would be if you had it automatically running tests and everything. So it got through and then when it gets to, when it's ready to go to prod, it goes to prod. 
Yeah, yeah. Even though we only did it for that one phase in the life cycle, you can definitely make the lightning bolt show up for any of these mm -hmm. environments, any of those phases. So that is, uh, like, if you can get there, that is a really good pattern app. Deploy to dev, run some smoke screen tests, some automated UI test, all those pass, then you can automatically uh, deploy to test because at that point the release will have entered the test phase and then trigger that deployment automatically, maybe run some automated performance tests, other, other types of tests there. I, I, but I, I do want to point out, I'm not saying just deploy directly to production on like unfinished code. You should be using some sort of branching strategy, say feature branches or Git flow. So when you do merge something into master, it is in a state where it feels like it's final and it's ready to go to production, not just, I'm just going to throw crap against the wall and call it good. <laughs> Uh, test in production only is the, the name. <laughs> it's a good policy. <laughs> Don't always test, but I test in production and it causes my servers to, to melt. I have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. Thanks uh, for walking through that with me, guys, and good questions all around. Uh, like I said, that's one of my favorite features, and I don't know. I think uh, I've seen this question kind of come up a few different ways, and it's just good to remind people that there are – different ways, many different ways to do what you're trying to do, and it's good to, to know what the options are. Yeah, I've kind of discovered that with Octopus. There's a lot of ways to accomplish something. All right, so that is my question for the day. If you have an interesting question, you can submit it at hello.octopus.com slash askoctopus. You can email us at advice at octopus.com. So if you have a question about how to do something or you're wondering if you're approaching a problem the right way and you need advice about using Octopus, send it to advice at octopus.com and we will help you out and you'll potentially see that question on a future episode. And we're also in our Slack community. So if you go to octopus.com slash Slack, you can join our community Slack channel where you'll see some of us hanging out and, and helping out throughout the week, along with other Octopus users that are very friendly and, and always able to help out when they have time. All right. Thanks, guys. And y'all have a great weekend. And everybody else, we'll see you in the next episode. Sounds good. Thanks, thanks Ryan. Ryan. See you later, man.